what is so special about softmax activation function how it became the default activation function for multi class classification let's see in this video hello everyone my name is siva and welcome to my channel this is the eighth video of the series neural network from scratch from the last few videos we have been discussing about activation functions we have already discussed sigmoid and tanh function and their use cases all of these we have seen so far are used for binary classification and can't be used for multi class classification where the output layer has multiple neurons in this video we will go through softmax activation function which is used for multi class classification let us consider the example we saw in the previous video this is the case of multi class classification my outputs for this case should be the probabilities and the sum of the probability should be equal to 1 so these are the values i am assuming i will get from the weighted sum here now if i apply sigmoid on top of this i will get the values like these i can't use these as a probabilities we have seen this in the previous video also because the sum of them is not equal to 1 now let's see how to solve this one using softmax function if you see the basic requirements we have two requirements here the range should be between 0 and 1 and the sum of all the output should be equal to 1 if you consider the example here is there any way to do that what if we simply normalize these outputs so what do we need to do we need to calculate the sum and then we divide each value with the sum of all the values if we do this then we will get values like this now sum of all this is equal to 1 and all of them are between 0 and 1 so everything is good both conditions are satisfied is there any problem with this approach what if you have minus 5 here instead of 5 now the fraction will be negative here we can't have negative probabilities so we can't use this approach okay so everything seems good but we can't have negative values we need the values as always positive but we can use the idea of normalization because it is kind of restricting that sum of the values will be equal to 1 so let's simplify our problem now my inputs can be from minus infinity to plus infinity instead of getting the values between 0 and 1 I need the values between 0 and infinity. I will get the range between 0 and 1 by normalization anyway. So if there is a way to transform this into this then my problem is solved. We can do this exactly by using exponential function. If you see here the input range is from minus infinity to plus infinity whereas the output it gives always between 0 to plus infinity always positive values. Now in my previous case if i apply the exponential i will get the values like this all are positive values the range can be till positive infinity it doesn't matter now to take these values into the range of 0 and 1 i need to normalize so the sum is equal to 178 now i will divide all these values with this sum then i will get the values like this if you observe all the values are between 0 and 1 and the sum is also equal to 1 now even if i have some negative value here minus 5 instead of 148 i will get some value of 0 point something but it is still positive value and if i take normalization then the values will be always between 0 and 1 so this is what we wanted right so we solved the problem what we did is we used exponential term to transform all the values into only positive values once i am sure that my outputs will be all positives then i just need to normalize them to make them into the range of 0 and 1 and this is the same thing softmax does if you observe the formula it is just doing the exponential of the inputs and it is normalizing with respect to the sum of them k is the number of neurons in the output layer so we do this to get the values ranging from 0 and 1 now if you observe this every output of the softmax depends on all the other nodes i am calculating the softmax of z1 which is the first node but that calculation depends on the values of z2 and z3 and same is the case for others now if i want to calculate the derivative of this how to do that i need to calculate the derivative of softmax for doing the back propagation that's how the training happens now let's assume this is my output layer these are the softmax outputs so what exactly i need to calculate i need to calculate the s of z with respect to z now if i want to calculate s of z1 with respect to z1 we can't have only z1 because it depends on z2 and z3 so if i want to calculate s of z1 i need to calculate this derivative with respect to z2 and z3 also so we need to compute all these terms for s of z1 i need to calculate the derivative with respect to z1 z2 and z3 and same way for s of z2 and s of z3 now let's try to calculate these three terms first 
So what I'm exactly doing is I'm calculating the derivative of the softmax with respect to z1. If I do this, then I will get this value. If you observe the pattern here, my input is z and the softmax of z. If both are same, doing for the same node here, then my equation becomes like this. If both are different, that means the softmax is different, whereas the dependency is on another node, then the outputs look like this. If you write this in the general form, and I am taking numerator and denominator as i and j. If I do this, I will get like this. So the numerator is i and denominator is j. If both are equal, that is the first case here, then I will get this equation. And if both are not equal, then I will get this equation. So using these equations, we can calculate the derivative of the softmax function. So all these values, all these nine values, we can calculate using those equations. So that is how you calculate the derivative of the softmax function. It is not straightforward as in case of sigmoid and tan h because of the interdependency here. Both softmax and its derivative is computationally expensive. We have seen this. And for calculating a single derivative uh, for each node, we have to calculate the der partial derivatives with respect to all the other nodes. And this is only used for output layers. This can be used for hidden layers also, but the normalization and interdependency of the neurons it is unnecessary computation because we don't have a requirement in hidden layers that the sum of all the values should be equal to 1. If we have that requirement, then we might need this, but we don't have that requirement. In fact, we should have negative values also. That's why we went for tan h activation function. So that's why we can't use this for the hidden layers. This is preferred only for the output layers. And as we have seen, it is not a zero centered. Of course, this is a requirement here we cannot have negative probabilities so it should be all positive values so this also you cannot consider as a drawback now let's have a look at the python code implementation what we are doing here we are calculating the exponential and then we are dividing with the sum that is normalization if you observe x is actually a vector here it's not a single value if you take the example we have seen x is actually 2 3 5 and 1 and when we calculate the exponential of these values we will get this and then we do the summation of all these. That's what we are doing here in the denominator. After that, we are dividing each value with the sum of the values. Then we will get normalized values like this. That's all from this video. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please hit the like button and comment if you have any suggestions or corrections. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I have shared the playlist and resources in the description below. In the next video, we will be discussing about relative activation function in detail. See you there.